Good morning and welcome to this time of prayer for Thursday morning. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and this new day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And this morning it's Psalm 69, one of those psalms that speaks so clearly of our Lord and his crucifixion. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in the miry depths where there is no foothold. I've come into the deep waters, the floods engulf me. I'm worn out, calling for help. My throat is parched, my eyes fail, looking for my God. Those who hate me without reason outnumber the hairs of my head. Many are my enemies without cause, those who seek to destroy me. I'm forced to restore what I did not steal. You, God, know my folly. My guilt is not hidden from you. Lord, the Lord Almighty, may those who hope in you not be disgraced because of me. God of Israel, may those who seek you not be put to shame because of me. For I endure scorn for your sake, and shame covers my face. I am a foreigner to my own family, a stranger to my own mother's children. For zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who insult you fall on me. When I weep and fast, I must endure scorn. When I put on sackcloth, people make sport of me. Those who sit at the gate mock me, and I am the song of the drunkards. But I pray to you, Lord, in the time of your favour, in your great love, O God, answer me with your sure salvation. Rescue me from the mire, do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me, from the deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me, or the depth swallow me up, or the pit close its mouth over me. Answer me, Lord, out of the goodness of your love. In your great mercy turn to me. Do not hide your face from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in trouble. Come near and rescue me. Deliver me because of my foes. You know how I am scorned, disgraced and shamed. All my enemies are before you. Scorn has broken my heart and left me helpless. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For comforters, but I found none. They put gall in my food, and gave me vinegar for my thirst. May the table set before them become a snare, may it become a retribution and a trap. May their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see, and their backs be bent forever. Pour out your wrath on them, let your fierce anger overtake them. May their place be deserted, let there be none to dwell in their tents. For they persecute those you wound and talk about the pain of those you hurt. Charge them with crime upon crime, do not let them share in your salvation. May they be blotted out of the book of life, 
and not be listed with the righteous. But as for me, afflicted and in pain, may your salvation, God, protect me. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. This will please the Lord more than an ox, more than a bull with its horns and hooves. The poor will see and be glad. You will seek God. May your hearts live. The Lord hears the needy and does not despise his captive people. Let the heavens and earth praise him, the seas and all that move in them. For God will, re will save Zion and rebuild the cities of Judah. Then people will settle there and possess it. The children of his servants will inherit it, and those who love his name will dwell there. And Acts chapter 1, beginning to read at verse uh, 12. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. In those days Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about a hundred and twenty, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this. So they called that field in their language Echeldama, that is, the field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, May his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they nominated two men, Joseph, called Barsabbas, also known as Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the eleven disciples. Well, let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we read that vivid picture of the suffering and scorn that you went through on the cross. We thank you that there you died for me, that uh, my guilt you paid, my death you died, that we might live. Lord Jesus, we can never cease praising you or praise you enough for all that you endured for our sake. We thank you, Lord, and pray that you will keep before us the cross that we may always remember you day by day. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray this day, uh, continuing to pray for our government and advisors, the various decisions they make. Uh, we pray for those uh, living alone and uh, the, the, the mini bubbles they may be able to have to uh, find companionship and support. And we pray for how that works out, Lord. Uh, we pray too for shops as they open, that they may be um, secure from illness. I pray too for um, outdoor attractions. And pray too for our decisions as a church as to how to implement 
and to make work for good um, the advice that has been given to us uh, by the government. Lord, we pray for Mike and Angela, our church wardens, for our PCC as they consider these matters and work towards a decision. Lord, we long that um, our church building may once again be a place where we can gather. We know that actually gathering together is some way off, but we still long that it may be a place that people may come and pray and meet with you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And Heavenly Father, um, we do pray today for those going to work um, as many more places of work begin to open up. Um, just hearing the noise of the traffic in the background, it just seems a bit louder even today than yesterday. And as more and more people um, re-engage with travelling to work, Lord, we ask that uh, you would watch over us and our economy. May we be uh, generous and compassionate, not grasping and selfish. We thank you that you have given work uh, in creation as part of what it is. And we pray especially for those who find themselves out of work at this time, that you may open new opportunities for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray for those on our contact list, um, particularly those names either side of ours, whether they be young or elderly, and whatever they face today. Lord, we long that this time may be a time of growing discipleship, of growing love for you and knowledge of your scriptures, and pray too for their opportunities to share the good news about you with their neighbours. We ask that around this village there will be open hearts and minds to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. For his name's sake. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through jesus christ our lord amen and as our saviour taught us so we pray our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>